Hey guys, it's Aconcito Dreamer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with the AR Foundation. I'm going to be continuing the feature that I showed you on the previous video, which was occlusion. This time I'm going to show you how we can change occlusion in runtime, which means that we're going to have occlusion set as disabled to start with. And from that mode, we're going to go to a new mode, which is called fastest, from fastest to medium, from medium to the best, which is the best quality of occlusion that we can get on AR Core and also AR Kit. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to change the quality of the occlusion in runtime. So if we go to the AR Session Origin and you watch the previous video, you notice that I have uh, in the AR camera, we have an AR occlusion basically manager. I was thinking it was the other one, but this is the one that I created. This is the one that comes with the AR Foundation version that I told you to download, which is for that 1.0 preview too. So by default, it's going to be disabled. I also had a UI here to show you the object count, also the FPS, and also the quality, whether it's disabled, whether it's set to every single one of these modes, fastest, medium, and best. So I figure I wanted to see it in real time just to see how things, you know, how things look. And I also have an AR occlusion quality controller, which we're going to be going through, which is basically just setting this property based on the toggle that I have. So I also have a frames per second here and also an object count. So let's go ahead and connect it to my mobile device. I'm just going to go ahead and go into here. And I downloaded this tool called, called SCRCPY. And it's really cool because you can actually, you know, broadcast to and basically cast to your Android device. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's go ahead and do the IR and just launch it. And it's going to look for the first device that it finds. So in my case, it's my Google Pixel, so you guys can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Occlusion app, and that way you guys can see what I'm doing. Probably just going to move this to the left. And this is going to open the Unity logo, hopefully here in just a, in just a few seconds. And then we're going to be able to see the my office. So right now we are at you know, 60 frames per second. Everything is going fine. I'm just showing you the table. The quality on the bottom is disabled. So that's fine because I'm going to start doing ray casting. So I have a device right there and basically a 3D model. I'm going to put a 3D model here, another one here. And then perhaps we can just add another one right here. And because these, the occlusion is disabled and we were to move this that way, there's really no occlusion happening right now, right? So. This is what I wanted to see. What happens if I, you know, if I actually enable occlusion in runtime? So I'm just going to change it to fastest. You can see quality fastest on the very bottom. And now you guys can see that occlusion is actually working. I'm just going to move my phone. And there we go. Let's go ahead and change it. And perhaps let's just add a couple more. I'm going to add one right there, one right there, so we guys can see. And you guys can see that the edges are not perfect, but it's doing a really, you know, it's doing a really good job. I'm also going to move my phone. You guys can see that. So what if we add it? Let's go ahead and add another one here and also change the quality to medium. Medium is going to look a lot better. It's going to have more computation time, but at the same time, it, you know, it looks it looks really good. You can see how the edges are getting calculated. Let's go ahead and move everything. You guys can see how, how that works. And again, it's not perfect, but it's really, really, really good. So let's try and do, let's, let's go ahead and go back into the best, right? This is going to be the best quality that we have. And I mean, you guys can test it and see what works best for you. The frames per second are staying between 55, I would say 57 and 60. It's really not affecting performance that much. And know that, I mean, this is a very simple, a very simple experience. But if we add a couple more, we can add a couple more there. You guys can see how that it's working. So let's go to go back into disable. You guys can see so that, you know, shows you that occlusion is not, it's not even enabled at all. So we're going to go back into fastest. Now we're getting, you know, we're getting some really good results, even though it's the lowest quality. So what about medium? Get good results in medium. And then if we go to best, now we're getting really good results in best. So that's what I wanted to show you as far as like, as far as what, you know, what happens on the device. Let's go ahead and close out of this. And then we can continue the video and look at some of the code. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how I make this work and how everything is hooked together. So some of the components that I have in here, you know, just some of the default components that I have, error session, error session origin, 
there's really nothing extra here other than what I always tell you to add air session origin the airplane manager because we're doing you know we're doing plane detection ray casting because we're doing ray casting of course to place the objects placement controller I got the lion so this one I'm going to show you a little bit of some changes that I had to make in order to increment the count it's, it's very basic there's really nothing complicated there the other things that I also have here let me collapse the things that we don't really need to worry about but I have the air post driver air camera manager I mean these are just things that I added on the previous video in this video I added the air occlusion manager I also did it on the previous video but in this one I decided to set it to disable and see if I could set it in runtime and that's what I'm going to show you what does most of the work so it's set to disable to start but then this component here the air occlusion quality controller this is something that I created is the one that is basically responsible for changing this based on the state of the toggle and when I say the state of the toggle I'm talking about when you press it it's going to go to the next one and if I press it again it's going to go to the next one if I press it again it's going to go to best so let's go ahead and look at it and see how it works it's actually fairly simple there's really not too much logic to it so let's wait until the Visual Studio project opens up and I can show you how this works so this is fairly simple I have a required component it's going to be the AR occlusion manager this is the name of my script I have the a reference to the AR occlusion manager so that I can basically set it on the awake so the awake method I say okay get component AR occlusion I set that variable and then I have a method here that changes the quality that way I can call it from the UI manager and say okay UI manager where are you at right now what is the state of the button is if it's currently disabled I'm going to change this to be you know the fastest if it's fastest it's going to go to medium if it's medium it's going to go go to best and I just say you know AR occlusion manager can you change your requested environment depth mode and if you go here you can see that these are some oh, there's a lot of things in here the the one that I'm changing is the requested environment depth mode which is basically this property right here and then I just pass in the enum the unity define and then I set it then I also have another public method in here that gives me the current state of the requested environment depth mode that way on the UI manager I can say okay what is your current state if it's set to a specific state change it to this other state so that's this one right here now if we go into the let's go ahead and go and look at the UI manager UI manager is fairly simple I have the object count text this is going to display the counter of how many actual status I've, I've added to the scene I have added to the scene if I can say that better also the frames per second this is you know what was showing 57 through 60 that's a good average also the quality button so that we can change the actual quality of the occlusion the delta time so that we can track and calculate what the FPS is and then also the quality button text so that we can change the state so on the awake method I just get the text box that way I don't have to do this call every time I need to change the state I just say okay just give me your text box and and thereafter I'm going to be changing that to depending on the state right then on the start method I set the default basically the this text box I set it to disable so if we go and look at it the default state is going to be disabled and I know that because we have it set to disable a star this is going to say okay you know what AR occlusion quality controller give me your singleton and get me the current depth mode it's going to get back here and I'm going to use a string interpolation to show in this case it's going to be disabled because it got called from the star method then I have another method here to call whether you know whenever I change the the object counter so if I have two status this is going to have you know the value of two so therefore I'm going to be passing it to a value of two here and this is not keeping track of the counter and the reason for that is because this is a UI manager it should be dumb all it needs to know is is how to update UI information it shouldn't be keeping track of anything else so this is going to get the count and then the the actual object count text is going to be displaying the count then the toggle quality this is going to be called from the button itself so this button right here it's going to it, it has an action and I did that through the inspector I'll show you that in a minute and when it gets the action the unclick action I'm going to say okay what is the depth mode currently set to so if it's set to disable we're going to go into the switch statement I'm going to say okay this is currently disabled so I'm going to change the quality to fastest so this is always going to go one more meaning that from the sale is going to go to fastest from fastest is going to go to medium from medium is going to go to best and from best is going to go back to the sable. so we're basically you know cycling through here and then every time I change I change the mode on the occlusion to a new mode I'm going to be setting the actual the quality 
text on the button so that we can see that this is this is actually getting changed. So that's this part, and then this is the calculation for the frames per second. If you if you're interested about it, this is basically from the Unity forum, so that's where I got it from. And let's see what else we can look at. Let's go ahead and look at the placement controller, right? So we look at this and how this communicates with the AR occlusion manager by using the AR occlusion quality controller. We looked at the object cam, we look at the FPS calculation. We didn't look at how we're updating these. I mean, we look at how we update it, but we, we didn't look at how it's actually getting stored. And that's just a couple of changes that I made on the placement controller. I have a new variable that I'm using to keep track of those, and that is this place prefect count. So this was already set. I already had it from the previous video. I just got the integer count. And I did a couple of changes in here for refactoring. I didn't want to get you know, a new statue when I was pressing over the UI, so I also added an extension method to do that. So here's the code to do that. And if we go back into the placement controller, you can see that as soon as I touch, I get the touch position. If the touch phase is begin, meaning that we started to touch the screen, and we're gonna find out if we're over a UI element. So if I'm pressing a bound, I don't want to instantiate a new statue. In that case, I'm going to be, you know, I'm not gonna be executing the, the save statement. But if I'm not over UI, this is gonna be, it's gonna be true. Actually, it's gonna be false, which means it's gonna be true. So we're gonna get in here. And then as long as we're recasting with the plane, then in that case, I'm going to get the pose. I'm going to instantiate the statue. I'm going to increment the, the place prefab count. And then I'm going to basically update the label that you see, that you see right here. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. That's basically a, an overview of how to change the AR occlusion manager in runtime. If you guys have additional questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know. And I'm gonna be submitting this to GitHub tonight so you guys can check it out and download it and test it on your own. Thank you very much, guys.